Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of MacBreak Studio. If you don't know already, Mark and I are huge fans of Pixelmator Pro. In our last video on the subject, Mark showed you how to use it to create shapes that you can edit and animate in Apple Motion. If you haven't seen this video, there's a link below or click the info button. Now I've heard from a number of you that you wanna see a Pixelmator Pro tutorial that focuses exclusively on Final Cut Pro workflow, no motion. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to build layered graphics in Pixelmator Pro, then animate them in Final Cut Pro. I have opened a photo of a mid-century Cadillac sedan that I purchased from Shutterstock. This car is gonna be the centerpiece of my motion graphic, but I'll need to get rid of the background. Clicking this button and Pixelmated Pro's AI engine goes to work, and in a matter of seconds, the car is isolated on a transparent background. While the algorithm did a very good job of removing most of the background, you can see that the image could use some cleanup around the edges. In the toolbar, I'll choose the Quick Selection tool. Clicking the background displays the current selection, but it doesn't include the humans around the edges of the car. To add them to the selection, I'll paint over them. The unwanted pixels will turn yellow to indicate they're being included in the background. When I'm finished, I'll press Delete, then press Command-D to deselect everything. To clean up some of the rough edges, I'll press E to call up the Erase tool, then paint out the areas the other selection tools could not easily address. Even with the help of machine learning, photo editing still requires some human elbow grease to get things looking the way you want. Now with the car cut out, I'll press Command-C to copy it, then Command-N to create a new document. I'll choose Film and Video from the sidebar, then choose the HD template and click Create. I'll paste the car into it, then zoom out so I can see the image control handles. Holding the Option and Shift keys, I'll drag one of the corner control points to scale the image from the center. Great. In order to color correct the image without the distraction of the background, I'll disable the bottom layer. The car is still looking a bit flat, so I'll apply some machine learning to improve the contrast and color. Press A to call up the Color Adjustments panel, then click the ML Enhance button. Instantly, the exposure, contrast, and colors improved. However, I don't think the AI went far enough with the saturation, so I'll boost the vibrance just a bit to make the pink more intense. To see a before and after, click this button. Next, I'll work on the background by re-enabling and selecting the bottom layer. Then press S to call up the Style panel. Using the Style menu, you can choose from different groupings of fill and outline color presets. I want a gradient, so I'll choose that category, then choose a teal color. I'd like the lower part of the gradient to be darker, so I'll click the first color tag, then drag the color selector into the darker area of the color field. To edit the placement of the gradient, click this button. Then drag the on-screen controls in the canvas. One of the best things about Pixelmator Pro is how fast you can create custom shapes. From the Tools menu, select the polygonal shape, and make sure Fill is enabled, then select a color. In the canvas, draw out the shape and adjust the control points to make it the size you want. This shape is what Pixelmator Pro calls a smart shape. By dragging this green dot, you can add more sides to the shape by dragging clockwise, and reduce the number of sides by dragging counterclockwise. You can also edit the shape further by right-clicking and choosing Make Editable. I'll drag across all the points to select them, then right-click on a control point and choose Make Smooth Point. Now I can select each point individually, adjusting the curves and the placement of each curve to get the retro vibe I'm after. When you're done editing, press Escape. I'd like to add a few more shapes along the left side of the frame. From the Shape menu, choose Shape, and a library of shapes appear in a menu at the top of the panel. I'll choose this right triangle, then click once in the canvas to add it. Then adjust its size. I'll change the shape color to a light pink using the Color Fill palette. I'll need a few more of these, so I'll press V to return to the Arrange tool, then Option Drag for Copies. 
I also think it would look better if each shape had a different orientation. Hold the Command key and move the cursor over the corner of the shape and drag to rotate it. I'll do this for each one. Because I plan on importing this document into Final Cut Pro, I want to simplify how many layers there are, so I'll select all the triangle shapes from the Layers panel, right-click and choose Unite. The shapes are placed into a group, but can still be accessed for further editing by clicking the Disclosure Triangle. I also want to add some text that conforms to the shape I created. From the Tools menu, choose the Path Type Text Tool. Move the cursor over the edge of any shape. You'll see one of two icons. If the T is upside down, you'll be adding text inside the shape, and when it's right side up, you'll be adding text outside the shape. Click to add the text, then begin typing. I'll type out Pink Cadillac. To choose where along the path you want the text to appear, click the right edge of the text box and drag to increase the size. Then drag the left side of the box to move the text along the path. Now I'm ready to export this layered graphic to Final Cut Pro. Before I do that, I'll press Command S to save this document in case I need to edit it further. More on that in a bit. In order to bring this document into Final Cut Pro with all the layers intact, you'll need to export the file as a Photoshop document. From the File menu choose Export, and in the Format menu choose Photoshop Document. Check the box labeled Optimize for Final Cut Pro. This will ensure that all the vector shapes and applied effects will be rasterized at the highest quality. Name the document and save it. In Final Cut Pro, drag the PSD graphic you exported over the event. Now this next step is very important if you want to edit your document outside of Final Cut Pro and have the changes you made be reflected. Make sure you see a hook icon instead of a green plus. You can toggle between one or the other by holding the Option key. When you see the hook, release your mouse. Final Cut is now referencing the graphic wherever you saved it from within Pixelmator Pro. Once imported, the icon in the upper left of the graphic will look like a stack of paper, indicating that it's a layered compound clip. Double-click to open it into the timeline and expose all the layers. Skimming over each layer isolates it in the canvas so you can quickly identify it. Now before I show you how I would approach animating these layers, let's discuss how you would make changes to this graphic in Pixelmator Pro. In the browser, right-click on the thumbnail and choose Reveal in Finder. Then open it in Pixelmator Pro. As you can see, the layers are all available in the Layers panel. However, unlike the original document this was created from, your editing ability is limited because all the layers were rasterized when the Photoshop document was exported. This means that you won't be able to edit the vectors, but you will be able to scale, reposition, and change the color. I'll select the polygon shape, then drag the corner to resize it. I can also change the fill style to a different color or gradient. I can also do the same to the background layer. I'll change it to a pink color, then edit the color stops to create a different look. Assuming I'm happy with the changes, I'll press Command E to export. By clicking Export, the app prompts me if I want to replace it. I'll click Replace. Going back to Final Cut Pro, all the changes I made are now reflected in the timeline and in the canvas. There is, however, one small glitch I discovered in the round tripping process, and I'm sure the good folks at Pixelmator Pro will address this once they see it. Notice the text layer is not in the correct position. This is an easy fix by enabling 2D transforms and then moving it back into place. Great, now let's animate. Now I could use keyframes to bring in each layer, but that seems so 1990s. I much prefer a plugin from Motion VFX called M Behaviors. I've included a link below. I'll reveal the titles browser, then scroll down to the M Behavior category. Skimming over the thumbnails, these are a library of build-in and build-out animation presets. I'll drag the bounce-in behavior over the layer of the car, then play back. That's cool, but the effect is being applied to every layer, not just a car. Select both the behavior and the car layer and press Option G to create a compound clip. When played back, only the car is affected by the behavior. If you need to adjust the speed of the animation, just step into the compound clip, then drag the behavior longer or shorter, then return to the parent timeline. For the background shape, I'm going to use the fall in behavior, placing it above the layer. 
A warning dialog lets you know that you'll be altering the contents of the source clip. Well, normally you wouldn't want to change the source clip, but in this case I want to, so I'll click Continue. Again, I'll select both the behavior and the layer and turn them into a compound clip so that the animation is isolated to just that graphic. Finally, I want to animate on the title. However, I don't want the animation to happen until both the car and the shape have fully resolved on screen. I'll move the play to this frame, then trim the layer to the playhead. I'll add the blur in behavior above the title and create a compound clip. The animation is a bit slow, so I'll step into the compound clip and shorten the behavior title. I'll return to the main timeline and play back the final animation. So what do you think? Do you use Pixelmator Pro? Do you use M Behaviors? Let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you next time.